because what we're talking about today is trigonometric substitutions. And um, so we understand how to integrate with trig powers um, or trig functions and powers of trig functions. What we're going to do is look at where you might have a perfectly nice integral that has no, uh, no trig in it whatsoever. And you might, you might choose to introduce trig trigonometry uh, through a process that's called trigonometric substitution. And so that's what we're going to look at here um, today. And so I'm going to put my chat window up so that if anybody does want to ask a question, you can put it over in the chat window. Um, and so there's three sort of three sort of models that we're going to use for trigonometric substitutions. And so the um, you're going to examine your integrand, and um, you're going to be looking at, at your integrand and probably thinking, "Wow, that's a tough one." First of all, um, these are these are not for very this is not for a very simple integrand. A very simple integrand you would use one of our simpler techniques. This is when the integrands start to get complex looking, and so. Uh, you might be looking at it and thinking, well, okay, I could try an integration by parts, but that would take um, some some real work in there because of what you might have to choose for you and what they might have to be dv. And um, what I'm going to suggest to you is that if you look at your integrand and you and you examine it and you see something like the square root of a squared minus u squared, this is our first example. Um, I've drawn a triangle over here on the right to kind of show you how a trig substitution um, might facilitate your, your uh, uh, integral because um, in that integral then, you know, if, if you look at it, the, uh, the function u, whatever u is, okay, um, if you think of it in terms of trigonometry, uh, you know, here's u and it's the side opposite from the angle theta, okay, and then we have the a, which is over here, which is the hypotenuse. Um, then you might you might be thinking, hey, I know that in, in that old Soka Toa logic there, right? The sine of theta is u over a. Um, so that actually suggests a pretty cool substitution that u would equal a sine theta. Okay. And then while I'm also here at the triangle, um, notice that I've got this adjacent side, which is that term that triggered us in the first place to want to look at this. It's square root of a squared minus u squared. That's the adjacent side. And so I might be thinking, hey, you know, the cosine of theta would be adjacent over hypotenuse. And so again, move the a over. And I get that the square root of a squared minus u squared is equal to a cosine theta. And um, what this will allow us to do then um, is to make a trig substitution into our integrand. Um, we're gonna do a complete change of variables away from whatever u was, and we're going to convert everything into integrating with respect to theta. And so, um, We'll take a quick example here uh, and, and check this out. And then I'll get you the other two patterns um, without doing intervening inter examples so that we can then kind of just examine some integrals and, and see which one we think it is. So, um, but here's a quick example of this. Uh, let's see. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to kind of squeeze it in over here. I, yeah, it'll fit. So my, my integral uh, is dx over x squared square root of nine minus x squared. Okay, now since we only know one trigonometric substitution pattern, that's, this is obviously the one. So in this case, right, uh, a is three because my square root is three squared minus x squared, okay? And u in this case is x. So if I were to um, you know, fill in my triangle here, okay, that would be what this triangle would look like for our particular uh, uh, integral that we're looking at here. And then I know, okay, I know that u, which is x is going to equal, three sine theta. 
I also know that the square root of uh, nine minus x squared is going to be three cosine theta. Now, the one thing that um, uh, isn't uh, isn't obvious right here at the moment um, is what is what is dx equal to, right? We've set up with u and the and the square root of a squared minus u squared, but you can see that there's a dx in our integral, so we're going to need a dx, which, as you can see, you could just integrate the x and get three cosine theta d theta. Oops, there we go. All right. So now I think what we're ready to do is change our integral, which was going to be tough. I mean, this was not going to be a simple integral anyway, um, but now things get a whole lot easier. We have dx on top, which is three cosine theta d theta. We have x squared in the denominator. So that's nine sine squared theta, right? And, um, we have uh, the square root of nine minus x squared in the denominator, which we know that is three cosine theta. And look, the three cosine thetas cancel out. And we're left with one ninth times one over sine squared. Hey, that's cosecant squared, right? And look how, look how easy that integral is. We know the integral of, of cosecant squared is negative cotangent squared, or sorry, negative cotangent, not squared. Now here, like all substitutions, if we started with x, we need to get back to x's. Well, can you come up with the cotangent of theta from our triangle that we have up here? Sure, right? Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so cotangent is adjacent over opposite. And we get negative 1 ninth times the adjacent side, square root of 9 minus x squared, over the opposite side, which is x plus c. And uh, there we go. That's, that's, a, that's how our trig substitution can take what would have been a pretty tough integral, dx over x squared times root 9 minus x squared, and, you know, turned it into something that was actually pr pretty straightforward. Um, you know, we did get a little lucky with the canceling of the three cosine thetas. That doesn't always happen. Um, but that's the nice thing about bringing sines and cosines together. Because like we saw in the last section, powers of trig functions, you know, there are some ways we can save a factor of sine or save a factor of cosine and convert or use power reducing formulas and so on and so forth. So. Um, yeah, trig substitution is it's actually a, can be quite a, quite a handy way to, uh, oh, I did have a blank page there, darn it. <laughs> quite a handy way to uh, do an integral. All right, uh, next pattern that you're going to look for. Um, this time is the square root of a squared plus u squared. Okay, and so you might just right away notice how I've set up our triangle. Um, and so you're probably looking at that going, oh, okay. So now you see where the ones that don't have the radical are, they're the opposite and the adjacent side. So, um, you know, that's tangent, right? Tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. So U equals A tan theta is how this one will work, okay? What about the square root? Okay, well, in this case, the square root, right, is the uh, hypotenuse. And so you, you're probably correctly thinking secant theta because that is hypotenuse over adjacent. And a little, little, little maneuvering here gets us that the square root of a squared plus u squared is equal to a secant theta. And so that's how, um, that's how we would set up for that particular uh, integral. Uh, while we're here, I just remind you that you are going to need, you know, your integral is going to have du somewhere in it. So um, you're going to always want to remember to come back to, you know, this, this substitution here and say, oh yeah, by the way, du 
right, is a secant squared theta d theta. And so uh, make all that substitution happen and voila, you'll have a nice, uh, hopefully a nice, anyway, uh, integral the involving tangents and secants. That then we go back to what we did in uh, 7.3 and we look at, you know, how do we handle the particular combination of secants and tangents that we have in this integral. Uh, so that's uh, when you have the pattern square root of a squared plus u squared. Now, as I mentioned, I'm not going to do an example of these uh, right now. We'll, we'll work them in in the next couple of examples. Um, so let's see, we had a squared minus u squared. We had a squared plus u squared. There's only one other combination we need, of course. And how about u squared minus a squared? All right. Uh, and so I've drawn the appropriate triangle for that one. And um, in this case, you know, u is the, the function u is now the hypotenuse. And, and so I have the adjacent side is labeled a, and I have the opposite side is labeled square root of u squared minus a squared. Um, that's just because, um, so this one, um, it sets up, it's, uh, um, <laughs> even if it was c factorial, it'd still be a constant, just saying. Uh, in this one, the, uh, the secant is going to be the initial uh, arrangement you want, secant of theta. Oops, I left the pen red, oh well. Um, that's u over a in this case. And the a would move, and so you would get that u is a secant theta. And then, um, you know, the tangent, uh, the tangent of theta is going to be uh, the square root opposite over adjacent. And uh, we move that over. Now, this one does have a weird um, peculiarity to it just because of the square root here. Um, oh, hang on. Let me give us a little room here. Um, there's, a, there's the possibility this could be a negative in here. Um, if we're, if we're from, if we're, if the angle that we're looking at is between zero and um, pi over two, of course that's positive. But if the angle that we're looking at is larger than pi over two um, to pi, then we end up with a negative in there. And how would we know if that was like that? Well, it comes back to this, looking at the secant. Um, and so, uh, Anyway, well, it doesn't usually impact it too much, but there may be a there may be a situation where you're like, oh, uh, uh, you know, they they got a negative in the back and I got a positive, and then if it's this one, uh, double check what that secant the ratio was, because um, it could end up being on the uh, the other side of of the ninety degree. All right, let's take a look at some more examples here, and now. Um, We'll, we'll kind of use this idea of, okay, what does the integrand show us that will tell us which one of the three, um, the three uh, substitutions it's going to be. And so um, here's, uh, here's my first one. Whoops, where is the pen? There it is. All right. Uh, or sorry, this is the second example. This is example two, where I did example one on the other page. So this time, um, this is the square root and it's four X squared plus one. Okay, and the nice thing about when there's a positive sign in, in the radical sign uh, is that there's only one of the substitutions that has that. So this one is obviously that triangle. Um, I'm just gonna trot out real quick. So, all right, so here's theta. Um, now remember, let me go back to it. Okay, we label the triangle with the A on the adjacent side and the U on the opposite side so that our tangent is, U is equal to A tangent theta. Okay, so that's the, so the A is on this side and the U is on this side. So the, the hypotenuse then is the four X squared plus one. Oops. 
So in this case, u is 2x. Because it's opposite over adjacent. So it's 1 tan theta. The square root of 4x squared plus 1 is a secant theta. There we go. And so um, the uh, the two that's in here, um, you know, with the x, uh, you can you can derive with it there, uh, or if you're like, oh, I'd rather have that over on the other side because I need to solve for dx, um, you can move it before you take the derivative. You can move it after you take the derivative. It doesn't really make a difference. Um, you know, if I leave it where it is, I drive the left side. I get two. Um, dx equals secant squared theta d theta, you know, and then you go, oh, well, I don't have a 2 dx. I just have a regular old dx up there, but that's easy enough to, to clear up. You can do it that way. Um, or you move the 2 beforehand, and then you get dx equals 1 half secant squared theta. And either way, you get the 1 half. So that's, that's my point. Uh, you don't, you don't uh, have to worry about where the two ends up. Uh, so let's uh, let's see. I've kind of written all this in the way here. So let me rewrite it down here. Um, so I have two dx, which I know is now secant squared theta t theta. Oops. Uh, I think you understand. That's it. Oh, let me clear that up. That's just. Uh, over uh, the denominator, which is the square root of 4x squared plus 1, which we know is secant theta. So this is 1 half the integral of secant theta. Um, which uh, you probably remember is the natural log of uh, secant theta plus tangent theta. Um, And then we just have to back substitute um, from, our, from our triangle. Luckily, we actually have secant theta and tangent theta already, um, already solved for in this one. So we just get 1 half. Ugh, sorry, I just can't. 1 half the natural log of secant theta, which is the square root of four x squared plus one plus tangent of theta, which is two x. Let's see. Um, and there is a great example of again a, an integral that, you know, that dx over the square root of four x squared plus one. Um, you know, without this technique, uh, that's a that's not a very simple. Uh, integrand, and so it would be uh, a pretty tricky one to do, um, but a little trig substitution, and everything seems to just kind of sort itself out, which is very nice. Um, okay, uh, let's do one more together, and then uh, I think it'll be time for for some practice. Example three. Now, if you are following along in the textbook, um, I have been doing um, most of the examples just in order here. I'm going to skip over their example three um, because it uses the same substitution pattern as we just did. Uh, and so I'm going to skip over their example three. Uh, and I'm actually going to ignore the limits at first on example four, which is going to be my example three. Because um, I just, I'm more concerned about the pattern right now. And then, uh, and then we'll get to uh, the uh, the limits here. And you know, I think you're capable of figuring out how to plug limits in. So, um, so for this one, um, notice it's it's the square root of x squared minus three. So now thinking back to our, our triangles here, um, it, it's a subtraction. Okay, so that means it's not the uh, not the one we just did. You know, and it's it's the function squared minus the constant squared. 
And so we want to set our triangle up with the constant on the adjacent side and the function as the hypotenuse. So let's go back to that. So uh, this one, the, uh, the constant is the square root of three this time, right? Because that's, that's the constant squared. Um, and the hypotenuse in this case is x. So this side here opposite is uh, the x squared minus three. Okay, and so um, we'll set it up just like that. Um, and so uh, in this case, uh, x will be the square root of three secant theta. Okay, and the square root of x squared minus three will be uh, the square root of three tangent theta. And so um, let's make our substitutions and then see what uh, see what we get. Um, the uh, square root uh, in the numerator is square root of three tangent theta. The x in the bottom is square root of three secant theta. And uh, we have a dx, okay, which we, um, we need to know what dx is. Well, if this is x, then dx is obviously root three secant theta tan theta. Like so, uh, d theta, sorry. Like that, and you you get the canceling of the root three secant theta. So we just end up with square root of three integral of tangent squared theta d theta. And now we just need to integrate that. And this is where again we go back to seven three and say, oh, okay. So what do I do if all I have is even power of tangents, right? Um, and the the uh, technique was. Uh, rewrite it in terms of secants, right? So, uh, because I know uh, tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta minus one d theta. And when we integrate that, we get tangent theta minus theta. Aha, this one's a little bit different, right? because we have a theta in here. Um, you know, the square root of three, oh, I'm sorry, that is outside of this whole thing, like that. The square root of three tan theta, okay, well, we'll that's, that's an easy enough one to do, that, that's right here. How do we get theta back out of this thing, right? Um, and you have some choices here. Um, I, I tend to go with the simplest one, which, you know, um, you, you know, looking at, looking at, x equals square root of three secant theta. So you have x over square root of three is equal to secant theta. So the arc secant of x over the square root of three is equal to theta. And so that you could back substitute that in for theta. Um, it actually doesn't really matter which one you choose. Um, but it will make it, you know, you want to make sure that you match it up with something from the triangle. Um, when you're in there. And there we go. That's a super messy uh, integral. And uh, I don't know if, you know, I keep trying to call your attention back to like, how would you have done that without this trig substitution, right? You know, what would your what would your um, what would your u and what would your dv have looked like uh, to try an integration by parts on that? You know, because there's not you know there's no power rule that's going to help you. There's no rewriting of that that's going to help you. Um, you know, trig substitution is really um, really kind of a fantastic way to go about uh, go about integrating. Um, yeah, so there's our there's our three examples. Uh, the uh, 
special integration formulas on page 510. There are three of them. Um, I, would, I would not say you need to memorize those, okay? Um, you really don't need to worry about memorizing those three formulas there at the bottom of page 510. Um, but I would say is when you're working through this assignment, I, I, they, they come in handy. Um, so, so definitely, uh, definitely understanding that those are there uh, makes life a lot easier. Um, the last thing I'll say is that uh, when we first did arc length problems, uh, you know, last year, um, and, and uh, when we looked at how to find arc length, the functions that they gave us always had that sort of magic sort of algebra simplification that ended up like you took the function, you get, you did all this work on it. And then when you came back, all you did was when you, at the end, it was just the exact same function, just changed the sign in the middle just a little bit. Um, those functions had to be very um, contrived for us to be able to do the, uh, inter just because at the time we didn't have enough integration techniques to really be able to do the arc lengths. Um, but this technique, because you, you know, when you're doing those arc length problems, um, I don't know if you, if, it, you know, if you all remember, but um, arc length, uh, You know, when you do the arc length problem, uh, we said, hey, the, the length of the arc, okay, um, was equal to the integral from A to B, to the square root of one plus F prime of X, that quantity squared, DX. And um, all of the functions that we had, had to be these weird algebra functions. And there was this sort of mystical, magical algebra thing that happened so that we turned out that we could integrate it. Because, you know, for us as first years, when we saw a radical, our only technique was U sub, U sub out everything that's inside the, inside the radical. And that, that wouldn't have worked in the case of most of those um, problems if they weren't exactly a perfect square binomial because the square root went away. Now, as you can see, it's one plus F prime of X quantity squared. I mean, th that just looks so much like um, that uh, special integration formula uh, number three there. Or if you go back to the triangles, like triangle number two, that's how you would handle an arc length um, if you didn't have that sort of special algebra thing that it happened. So um, and when we get to the, uh, when we come back around with through uh, applications of integration, um, arc length will be one of them. Um, and this technique is going to be super helpful um, for us when we get to arc length because of, of how it handles the radicals. So, all right, guys, um, I'm going to go into stop the recording now.